was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Good evening, I'm Gary Hall, the Dean of Washington National Cathedral, and on behalf of Mary Ann Edgar Buddy, the Bishop of Washington, and all who worship and serve and work and volunteer here, I want to welcome you to this cathedral for this service of choral evensong. Tonight, especially, we celebrate the completion of the first phase of our earthquake restoration work, and we welcome as our special guests many of those who have made a contribution to these efforts over the last four years. To enter the space created by evensong means to enter and experience a small piece of an ancient and continuing tradition and a pattern of prayer. All over the world, across religious traditions, communities of faithful people embrace a rhythm of gathering for prayer in the morning, at noon, at evening, and before bed. In this newly restored space, God invites us into a place of shared reflection on scripture, the recitation of psalms, and prayer for ourselves, each other, and the world. So come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
Our first reading this evening is from the first book of Kings. When Solomon finished offering a prayer and a plea to the Lord, he arose from facing the altar of the Lord where he had knelt with his hands outstretched towards heaven. He stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice. Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he has promised. Not one word has failed of all of his good promise, which he spoke through his servant Moses. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he not leave us or abandon us, but incline our hearts to him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments his statutes and his ordinances, which he commanded our ancestors. Let these words of mine, with which I pleaded before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night. And may he maintain the cause of his servant and the causes of his people Israel, as each day requires, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, there is no other. Therefore, devote yourselves completely to the Lord our God, walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments as at this day. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. The word of the Lord.
la segunda lectura, una lectura de la Carta de los Hebreos. Así que, hermanos, mediante la sangre de Jesús, tenemos plena libertad para entrar en el lugar santísimo, por el camino nuevo y vivo que Él nos ha abierto a través de la cortina, es decir, a través de su cuerpo. Y tenemos además un gran sacerdote al frente de la familia de Dios. Acerquémonos pues a Dios con corazón sincero y con la plena seguridad que da la fe, interiormente purificados de una conciencia culpable y exteriormente lavados con agua pura. Mantengamos firme la esperanza que profesamos, porque fiel es el que hizo la promesa. Procuremos los unos por los otros a fin de estimularnos al amor y a las buenas obras. No dejemos de congregarnos como acostumbran hacerlo algunos, sino animémonos unos a otros y con mayor razón, ahora que vemos que aquel día se acerca. Palabra del Señor. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Este servicio está dedicado a los trabajadores que han dedicado tanto a la restauración de esta catedral. Estamos aquí para agradecerles por su labor, su sudor por su voluntad para subir las escaleras y las andamios, porque nos da miedo al resto de nosotros, por su trabajo tan fiel y capaz. Queremos agradecer también a todos de Davis Construction por su parte en planear, planear, organizar y dirigir la reconstrucción, y a todos que contribuyeron dinero para este proyecto. Les agradecemos a todos. El trabajo de restaurar un, una catedral es algo, diría yo, especial. ¿Saben ustedes la historia de los tres picapedreros? ¿Los tres picapedreros? ¿Conocen ustedes? Bueno, había una vez un hombre que se encontró con tres picapedreros que estaban trabajando. Y le preguntó al primero, ¿qué estás haciendo? Y el hombre respondió, bueno, estoy haciendo ladrillos. Es un trabajo muy duro que no tiene fin. Estoy aburrido, estoy cansado, harto de todo eso. Bueno, y le preguntó al segundo, bueno, ¿qué estás haciendo tú? Y el hombre respondió, yo estoy construyendo un muro. Es un muy, muro muy alto y trabajo es muy duro. No sé cuándo lo voy a terminar. Es muy aburrido, me cuesta bastante bueno, y, como, y cuando se acercó a la tercera, la tercera persona trabajando, le escuchó tarareando una canción mientras trabajaba, sonriendo, y le preguntó, ¿qué estás haciendo? Y el hombre se, el hombre se puso de pie, de pie, levantó la mirada hacia el cielo y sonrió y dijo, yo Estoy construyendo una catedral. No sé cuándo nos va a completar, pero mire su belleza, su gloria. Hoy en la diferencia entre los tres, porque ustedes están constru han construido una catedral han arreglado, han limpiado, han perfeccionado una catedral dedicada a la gloria de Dios y a la misión de ser una casa de oración para todos. Estamos aquí para agradecerles. Esta es su catedral ahora. Es suya para siempre. Y claro que no está, no, no está completo, porque necesitamos aún más dinero, aún, aún más habilidad, más trabajo para completarlo. Pero gracias a Dios que el terremoto del verano de 2011 no destruyó la catedral. Y cae a nosotros seguir el trabajo 
de repararla, para que continúe su misión a ser una catedral para todos. Gracias. We dedicate this evening song to the laborers who have toiled throughout cold winter months and the heat of summer, high above our heads on ladders and scaffolding, going about their work with dignity and care, while the rest of us have been going about ours, and they have been restoring and repairing this cathedral. We give thanks to God for the expertise and the professional guidance of Davis Construction, whose vision and careful planning and dedicated efforts have brought us to the completion of this phase, this first phase, and to the many, the many who have contributed financially and in countless other ways to this endeavor. And as we think back to those first surreal days and weeks, do you remember? Those first days and weeks, we pause to give thanks to those, the, those who offered such gracious hospitality, our neighbors who invited us into their spaces of worship when we could not enter this cathedral most especially to Washington Hebrew Congregation and the National Cathedral School. Outpouring of generosity after the earthquake was overwhelming. Large gifts and grants from individuals and foundations without which we would not be here today. And then other gifts, while perhaps smaller in amount, no less in generosity. In my first months here as bishop, this young boy, maybe 11 years old, proudly told me he had organized a fundraiser for the cathedral and would I sponsor him in his bike-a-thon. And an elderly woman, I'll never forget this, an elderly woman of very modest means who barely spoke a word of English approached me after a worship service at another of our Episcopal churches and she slipped an envelope into my hand and whispered, it's for the cathedral. And inside was a fresh, crisp $100 bill. So there's a story about cathedral building. Um, perhaps you've heard it. It's often called the parable of the stone cutters. A man came upon a construction site where three people were working. And he asked the first, you know, what are you doing? And the man replied, I'm laying bricks. I've been doing it for a long time. Don't know how long. It's an endless task. I'm bored. I'm hot. I'm tired. Sorry, he said went on to the second guy and said, what are you doing? And the man replied, well, I'm building this wall. It's a huge wall. Workers started it long before I got here. No idea when it'll be finished. Hard job, heat of the day. Sorry, he said. And then he approached the third. And as he did, he heard him humming a tune as he worked, grinning from ear to ear. And he said, what are you doing? And the man looked up, looked at the sky and smiled and said, I am building a cathedral. I have no idea if I'll live to see it completed, but look, would you look at the beauty and give thanks to God? I get to build a cathedral. So we honor all of you who have helped to rebuild and restore a cathedral whose mission it is to be a house of prayer for all people, a gathering place for our nation in times of joy and sorrow, a pilgrimage destination from people all around the world seeking a connection to God and to themselves, and a place where God's justice and compassion is given voice and intentionality. And you know, when the earthquake struck in 2011, it was at a time when other revered religious institutions and the cathedral itself were being shaken by forces other than earthquakes, and still are, and many people publicly reflected on the apt spiritual metaphor of a cathedral as grand as this being rocked by seismic forces. And the scaffolding has also been the subject of great symbolic reflection. What does it mean for this great symbol of religious presence, what does it mean for it to be so visibly wounded? 
so grateful that we didn't lose it. Have you ever been in parts of the world where cathedrals have been lost? I have. In Central America, it's all over the place. For earthquakes, volcanoes, wars, cathedrals can be built and cathedrals can fall down. And ours stood. Yes, damaged some, but still here. And it is the task of our generation to rebuild, restore, renew, and give new expression to the timeless truths that it holds. It's a big job, and it may outlive all of us, but aren't we the lucky ones, the blessed ones? We, we are the ones who get to restore a cathedral. Thank you for saying yes to your part. Amen. special prayers of blessing for every single person here whose hands touch some part of the restoration of this cathedral church. So if you worked in stone, if you cleaned glass, if you built scaffolding, if you managed a team, if in any way, shape, or form you had anything to do with the beauty we see restored this night, would you please stand where you are? Don't be shy. Please stand where you are. And the cathedral clergy are going to move among you and extend hands of blessing while we pray. So is everybody standing? We don't want to leave anyone out. So let's go here. Let us pray. God of all grace, we thank you for the gifts you have given to women and men to increase the richness of life and for the consecration of art, craft, and skill to your service. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who hallowed a carpenter shop in Nazareth and through it bless the satisfactions, challenges, and responsibilities of human labor. Send your blessing upon those who have given of themselves and their talents to restore this house of prayer for all people. By your spirit, continue to inspire them to see your truth, rejoice in beauty, and labor out of love for you. We thank you for stonemasons and specialty drillers who touch stones untouched for generations and who repaired the oldest part of this cathedral church, the oldest place of continuous prayer on Mount St. Alban. We thank you for conservators, those graced with love for the mystery of sound and stone, and those blessed with love for the miracle of light and stained glass. For we will hear and see anew the possibilities of sound and sight in the giving of praise in this God's holy church. We thank you for those skilled at design and management, anticipating needs and meeting challenges with wisdom and nimbleness. We thank you for those whose towering scaffolds prove sturdy and strong supports for all the work just completed. Eternal God, without you, the works of our hands have no meaning. Accept the gifts of all these men and women gathered here out of love for you. Receive the work of many hands, the giftedness of many hearts, the generation, generosity of many spirits, and send your blessing upon us all and upon this cathedral church, newly restored and made new. May it stand and have life as an enduring witness to your love and your justice, your grace and your mercy, your compassion and your peace. In your name we pray, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. And may all God's people say, Amen. Thank you so very much. Please be seated.
Let us pray. God eternal and everlasting, you fill all the world with your presence, that your name may be praised in every time and in every place. Bless this cathedral church of St. Peter and St. Paul, made holy by your worship. Bless all who enter here to worship and pray. Send your blessing upon this work of restoration just completed. Help us to persevere in the work that is yet before us, so that this place may resound with your praises for ages to come and continue to serve as a house of prayer for all your people. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Let us say together, Almighty God, you declare your glory and show forth your handiwork in the heavens and in the earth. Deliver us in our various occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do the work you give us to do in truth and beauty and for the common good. For the sake of him who came among us as one who serves our son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. And then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. After the final hymn, I hope that you will be able to stay and join us for the reception so graciously, graciously hosted by Davis Construction. As I was coming in, I saw them setting up as we we're leaving here to the left. So please stay if you can and allow us to the, continue this great evening of celebration. Let us give glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and to Jesus Christ our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.